là, on ne voit pas. OK, so welcome back. So I will start uh, with a, a gentle uh, first application of uh, all the techniques we saw. Uh, which uh, Leo call it uh, finding a needle in a haystack. Uh, and if you want to be uh, more fancy, it's uh, a planted version of the random energy model. Okay. Sorry? Je croyais. Yes, it's not working. It's working. Yeah, so uh, did you get complaint? <laughs> okay. So the model is the following. <coughs> Why the uh, risk scale L lambda times N vector x the c and it's li living in r <coughs> 2 to the n okay so what you want to mimic with uh, this dimension to this weird uh, dimension 2 to the n is a typical spin where you have plus minus one n of them so you have two choice for s and them so you have two the set the set of possible, uh, the cardinality of the possibility is two to the n. <coughs> okay, uh, so like usual, uh, the noise will be Gaussian. Uh, two to the n with no covariance. Uh, and now the law of x, is just uh, the basis vector for a random index. Okay, so th this is the part that is uh, planted in a sense. This is uniform on the set one to the end. So <coughs> random energy model will correspond to this and I'm adding a signal. I'm rescaling it properly to get non-trivial result. So you are observing uh, basically, uh, if you add only this, uh, you, you, this is IID uh, random variable. And uh, what you, the only modification you are making is uh, only in one coordinate, you are adding uh, uh, a vector, which is a uh, lambda of, Order uh, square root of lambda times n. So now the question, I mean, you are doing inference. So the question is, of course, can you recover what you planted in the model? So namely, can you recover the index <coughs> at which you, uh, you, you, add, you added the signal? So also something uh, which perhaps was not clear given the question I had this morning is that uh, all the results I derived, I didn't make any assumption uh, on the component of X. So you can take uh, a very complicated structure uh, of correlation between the component of the vector X. Uh, everything will go through. I never used it. The important part is that you, you, the noise is, uh, this is white noise. So there is no covariance uh, term in the, in the noise. So the noise added at each component of X should be IID each time, but the component of X, they might be, uh, have a very complicated structure, okay? So uh, uh, if you are given this problem, you, you will probably not do uh, what I, I will do uh, here, but uh, this is uh, to show you how we, are, uh, we will use uh, the tool uh, the developed so far. So uh, you, you can rewrite, I mean, you, you need to, to uh, to compute the Hamiltonian for this part, for this new model. Uh, 
So you want the posterior sigma naught given uh, what you are observing. So again, I'm in the base optimal setting. So I know lambda, uh, I know that sigma naught is uniform and uh, I'm observing y. <coughs> so this is uh, sigma knowing y. So this is So here I'm just plugging uh, uh, my model in, in, in the Hamiltonian. So you see that you have a new Hamiltonian and now the scalar product between X and Y is just this uh, simple uh, form. So this, you can replace the Y by the true value. So this is equal to the normalizing function two minus n. So this is a prior uh, on x. I'm making everything explicit. Uh, and the n times the noise that sigma is a big term corresponding to the signal. And so uh, the normalizing con constant is just to make this a probability, right? So you are summing over all the signal. So I'm sigma equal one, two to the n of this with the same uh, formula as, uh, as here. So, okay, what I told you is uh, if you are able to compute the free energy, then you are able to do everything. So, the free energy is just a log. <coughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and, okay, for, for the lower bound, it's uh, pretty easy. Uh, in this, so here you, you have a complicated uh, thing because you are taking the expectation of a log, okay? Uh, this uh, Z, you have a, a bunch of uh, terms, but actually uh, there is one term that will be uh, much bigger than the other, the one corresponding to the true signal. So you will keep only the <coughs> this term in the sum to get a lower bound. And uh, you will get the expectation of log of sigma naught two to the n. <clears throat> and uh, so now uh, this is a Gaussian random variable. Uh, you know to uh, how to compute uh, this. This is exactly lambda divided by two minus log two. Uh, now you, you can do uh, for the upper bound you, you will use uh, Jensen inequality uh, and in, in the end uh, what you will find is okay I will write directly the result should not be surprising if you know a little bit about the REM model it converts to zero if lambda is less than two log two onto this value otherwise. Which minus? Yes, because there is lambda n minus lambda n divided by two. I, I'm taking only sigma equal to sigma naught. So this is why I have a plus here. Okay. So this is a lower bound, which is consistent with this because uh, in this regime, this is negative. 
but uh, f cannot be negative. So it's a zero uh, <coughs> when lambda is small. Uh, this value when lambda is big, well, uh, and you have the, the exact threshold. Uh, <coughs> so now you can apply the I MMSC theorem, <coughs> which tells you. So this is for n as a function of lambda. And this is what we showed this morning. So, which means that uh, if you use this for the MMSC, it will go to one if lambda is small. And to zero if lambda is big. So, uh, what is the meaning of a uh, mean square of, of one? Well, what is the meaning of a mean square error of zero? This is probably easier. Yes, and uh, one is just what? A random guessing. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, with this argument, you don't know what happened uh, at the boundary exactly because uh, I'm taking the limit when n uh, when lambda is strictly equal to uh, 2 log 2. Uh, I don't know what the limit will be. And <clears throat> I mean, uh, I cannot not use it uh, here because it's not differentiable. Uh, but uh, well, it's of the big measure zero, so who cares? So if you say the lambda makes yeah. the Yes, yes. So I, I'm not covering this case. This is basically what I'm saying. Uh, no, this, this is a limit for the free energy. Uh, this is true for any n, this. So, this? Okay, I, I, I did prove the lower bond, I did not prove the upper bond. For the upper bond, you applied Jensen. Inequality, and, and you get you get that it's zero when uh, or this quantity when lambda is bigger than. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So I skip that part. Uh, and indeed, uh, okay. So uh, again, uh, the, using this theory might be a little bit uh, overkill in this case because. <coughs> uh, if you meet a random person in the street and ask for this problem, uh, what you will do? You take the yes, take the, the, the largest, uh, the, your estimator. Well, actually, you can show that this is a maximum likelihood estimator. Uh, it's just the arg max of the y sigma. And now you need to know that uh, for what is the behavior of uh, this quantity, so if you have only the noise, what is the max of uh, Gaussian random variable and you have two power n of them, well, it's two log two times n square root, okay? So you see directly that uh, there is it's scaling uh, like square root of n. So this is why I took the square root of lambda times n. So when lambda is bigger than this, then you, you are able to reconstruct. And otherwise, it's hidden by the maximum of the noise. Okay. But <clears throat> the, what, what you see here is that uh, using uh, the, the, the tools uh, <coughs> we showed this morning and yesterday, we are not analyzing at all any particular algorithm. 
So uh, typically, this analysis will work as soon as you are able to compute explicitly the maximum likelihood estimator. But for more complicated cases, uh, it's very hard to do. And my theory is not relying on a, a particular algorithm. Okay. So, but this is not what we want to do. So let's look at the model uh, I'm interested in with a bit more. So, which is a spite. Lickner <coughs> model. So, which is the following model. Uh, where now the X I are IID with uh, I'm denoting P naught. I'm assuming that it has a second moment uh, is equal to one, let's say. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a model where uh, so. Perhaps, I mean, I'm sure you saw it uh, during this course. In matrix form, you have a matrix Y. You have a vector X, you take X, X transpose plus Z, which is a Wigner matrix. So this is uh, why it's called, uh, you have one spike uh, with a Wigner matrix. Uh, so here you, you see that I'm observing only the upper triangular uh, entries. Uh, <clears throat> but I mean, if you want to observe all the entries, you will just rescale the, the noise. So here you have uh, the X uh, is a vector. And now uh, these two are matrices. Of dimension n by n, unsymmetric. Uh, something else, uh, if you want to connect this to the very first course uh, on semi-supervised learning, the model was not exactly uh, like this. It was uh, related to the spike we chart. So, which is a non-symmetric version of this, where you have y So, you remember I had a vector u on the label v, and I was taking the, the, the product. So, in this case, we don't have a, <coughs> a symmetric matrix. Uh, you can uh, do the analysis for this model uh, too. It's a little bit more complicated. So for the rest of this uh, course, I will uh, mainly concentrate on this one. Okay. So did you, do you agree that, uh, I mean, this is uh, the model that Mark Potter saw, <coughs> you saw in a uh, uh, so I, yeah, that is symmetric, but here I don't care because I'm only uh, observing the, so I mean, this is why I'm, I'm writing it with indices. I'm only looking at the upper triangle part of the matrix, if you want. <clears throat> so, yeah, so that's everything is I didn't, uh, I don't have to worry about the uh, equality. Uh, okay, so uh, there is a, <coughs> now I, I want to apply the, the theory I show you. It turns out there is a, a, a real problem for, for, this, uh, for, this, uh, for this particular case, uh, because all what I've said, I was, um, 
uh, measure of the performance is kind of uh, bound to fail in, in this case uh, as soon as you take okay a prior that is symmetric p not so uh, <coughs> clearly in this model you cannot estimate x well you can estimate x only up to a sign okay yeah the problem is fully symmetric if p phi not is symmetric so if you are giving me uh, x uh, minus x will work as well okay so you can only find x up to a sign so uh, again uh, p not symmetric uh, which means so what will be uh, this quantity So this is zero. Okay. Because uh, <coughs> I, I mean, each time I have having x minus x is so uh, MSC is useless. Uh, I should stop working on this problem and go to the beach and enjoy <laughs> the sun. Uh, so. Okay, so uh, which means that you, you <coughs> we are not done yet, and so uh, you need to know, to find another uh, measure of performance. So this uh, part of the talk is uh, is uh, is based on a joint work again with Leo Yolan. And uh, uh, I don't remember the title, but uh, inference with symmetric ma symmetry matrices. Uh, he did uh, the, this uh, this case in a. Uh, in another paper uh, and uh, what I'm trying in this course is to give you arguments that are not in the paper uh, so basically in the paper we uh, directly introduce the right measure of performance that we know to, to work with uh, and it's not explained why we are taking this one and not another one so uh, what what I'm trying to discuss here is uh, what is the natural measure of performance in, in, in this case so actually, uh, since this morning I was asked if uh, everything is working only for Gaussian, you can uh, go uh, <coughs> a little bit back to a general setting. Which is this one, so you have a symmetric matrix plus noise. Um, I'm not defining what the noise is. Okay, so I, I will make uh, an extra assumption that is not fully, uh, that is not really true uh, here. Uh, that uh, the norm of my vector x is one. It's it's almost true, but uh, only in the limit when n tends to infinity. Okay, so which <coughs> um, let's consider that. Well, for example, it's uniform. I, I don't need to, to specify uh, what is the, the exact distribution of x. Uh, so uh, since uh, we are not able to uh, determine x well, only to, uh, up to a sign, uh, there is uh, one natural uh, uh, measure of performance, which is called the cosine similarity. Basically, uh, what you want to guess is uh, the direction of x not if it's plus or minus one, and this is encoded uh, with the, the cosine similarity. So since uh, I, 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 I already used the bracket for the Gibbs measure, I need another notation uh, for the Euclidean uh, inner product. So I'm using this uh, uh, parenthesis notation. Uh, I hope it will be clear. Euclidean inner product. And uh, so the cosine similarity is what so you, you have two notions. Uh, the first one, yeah, you, you can see uh, it's the absolute value of your estimator with the true, or you take the sup. Of the square. Uh, 
Okay, so <clears throat> now I don't have the sign problem anymore. Here I'm taking the absolute value, or here I'm taking the square. So this will uh, <clears throat> take into consideration basically the angle with the true uh, direction that is given by my, my estimator compared to, uh, to the true one. So now, okay. Do you all agree that this is uh, more meaningful in my setting as a measure of performance? So the, <coughs> I hope so. No, the, the whole point is uh, uh, <coughs> I like to relate this to uh, MMSC of some kind. Uh, and this is uh, what, what I will do here. But, and it's true in a very general setting, this, this part. So the idea is uh, to consider uh, the n by n <clears throat> to see this uh, as a estimation of the matrix itself, not of the vector, and try to connect the estimation of the matrix to uh, the estimation of the vectors thanks to the, this uh, cosine similarity. So I will uh, consider the n by n positive uh, Definite uh, random matrix big M, which is what you expect if you now you are looking at uh, the, an estimate of uh, of this uh, matrix. You are looking at the posterior mean uh, given uh, y of of this form. Okay, so this is my notation. So now I'm back. I mean, with this, uh, I'm uh, I'm back to uh, to a standard MMSC. Uh, this is the best base optimal uh, estimator for <coughs> so the MMSC that I'm writing this way, <coughs> which is So do you agree with uh, with this? So here there is uh, one small uh, trick. I mean, what is this norm? Now I'm dealing with matrices instead of uh, vector. So uh, this uh, L2 norm is uh, what we call in matrix theory a uh, Frobidus norm, okay, where you are summing the, <coughs> the square of the entry. <coughs> so, uh, okay, I'm writing. So sometimes there is a F, but I will not put the F. So in my case, this is the square uh, ah, is symmetric. Okay. So now I want to connect uh, this matrix, which is uh, the one I will be able to do computation for, uh, thanks to the IMMSC theorem and everything, to uh, this matrix. Okay, how, how it relates. Uh, so the first thing you you <coughs> you can do is this. So indeed, everything that I'm presenting here is not written in the paper because uh, we are starting directly with this uh, MMSC and doing the computation with, with that. <coughs> well, it's not presented in, in this way at least. One minus, 
So this is uh, uh, the trace of uh, M square because I'm dealing with symmetric matrices. The, the one is coming from the fact that I'm assuming I'm uh, on the unit sphere. And then uh, you, you do, uh, this is uh, an easy computation. <coughs> the, the, Well, here I have no lambda because uh, I mean, I did not define what the noise is indeed. So there is no, uh, there is no parameter lambda. So this is why I'm writing the MMSC like this as an explicit function of all the parameters. So, uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, what will be uh, your guess? Okay, if I'm giving you this M matrix, uh, I mean, uh, which is hard to compute, huh? uh, but let's say you have access to this. What will be uh, uh, a good estimator now for uh, the vector X? This is basically the question I'm asking. In term on the measure of performance will be given by this uh, cosine similarity. So I have a random matrix. Why not? Huh? <laughs> yeah, this is what you expect because uh, uh, if you want to recover, I mean, uh, this is a rank one perturbation of the noise. Uh, you might be able to recover something if this rank one is uh, big enough. So this is what you saw. And in this case, uh, looking at the largest, the eigenvector associated to the largest eigenvalue might be a, a good estimate for, for it. But it's not given a priori. So this is what uh, we do now to show that this intuition is, is correct. Uh, okay. So the first thing you, you can do is uh, you can try to compute the cosine similarity for any estimator and try to, um, we will connect it to, uh, to M. Well, we will take uh, this version, which is a little bit easier. So I'm taking, a, sorry, an estimator X hat, not possibly not the best one. I'm computing, uh, it's uh, the square of the cosine. So I'm assuming that it's of uh, norm one. So this is, These are all vectors. So I'm adding just uh, the bracket. Uh, I'm allowed to do this because this is just a conditional expectation. This is a big Y. Now, you know what I'm, uh, I will do. I will use the Nishimori uh, theorem to replace this big X by a replica. Okay, so this is uh, a miserable function. Uh, this is Nothing else than this. This is a, these two are, sorry, there is a transpose here, uh, are measurable function of y. So uh, the, I'm taking the expectation given y, so I can move them uh, outside the, the bracket. And in the bracket, I will have the bracket of x, x transpose, which is exactly the definition of m. Okay, so uh, what you have is just shown is if you take the best possible, so this is always lower than the lambda max of M. 
if you take uh, your estimator as a uh, eigenvector associated to the largest eigenvalue, you, you will attain this. So <coughs> you have that the cosines. Like this square is okay. And again, I, I will not write it, but the, the optimal <coughs> uh, estimator uh, for uh, this metric is a uh, uh, unity convector of M. Okay, and now I, I want to uh, to discuss a little bit a more general result. So it looks like we are in, in, in the good direction like this. So what I did here, you see, uh, I had very, I almost no assumption. The only assumption uh, I used, uh, well, by the fact that it's on norm one, it's only here, so it's not, uh, not really uh, crucial. Uh, so, but uh, what we will be interested in is a limit when n tends to infinity. In my setting here, there is no, I mean, uh, there is no small n, it's just a fixed problem. Uh, and, uh, what I want to show is uh, asymptotic properties so that, that uh, asymptotically uh, this matrix will be n by n, so it will be growing. So you want to look at the largest second vector of a growing matrix. So you want to take limit. Uh, all the quantity are well defined in the limit, and you want to, to get result for, for the limiting quantity. So now I, I will consider a, a sequence of problems of inference problem. Uh, with an index n, and the, I want the, 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 the index of the problem to tend to infinity, and I will make the same assumption uh, as I did uh, in my uh, own wavy argument for the semi-supervised uh, learning. I will be a bit more precise here, but hopefully you, you will understand better what, what I made at this time. So GN is a posterior distribution of X. It should be indexed by N, but I will remove this dependence in N, uh, given Y N. So the, the assumption I'm making is there exists Q between zero and one such that if you take Sorry, two copies, x1, x2, iid, according to gn. Then tends to the quantity q in this solution. Okay, so a. Everything uh, is depending on n now, but uh, I will remove uh, the explicit dependence on n in my notation. But this depends on n, and it will converge to uh, a scalar uh, q. And then I will state something that I hope is correct, but I think so. So if you are only making uh, this assumption, so I'm not specifying a particular model or anything. This is uh, the, the, the only assumption I make. Uh, and you, you, you are considering now the, uh, the model associated to this. So you want to estimate the, the matrix uh, X, X transpose plus uh, some noise, uh, no assumption of the noise. The only one is, uh, is hidden here if you want. Then uh, you can show that the trace of uh, M square Going distribution to Q square, uh, lambda max of M. So M again is defined. Uh, this is this M going distribution to Q. If you now if V at 
is a leading eigenvector of M, then what do we have? <coughs> Uh, the Euclidean product uh, between this and the signal convergent distribution to square root of Q, the MMSC of X, X transpose given Y, so this is the one convert to one minus Q square. So this is, uh, I mean, as soon as you know that the trace of the N square is Q2, this follows directly with the formula we saw. And now, <coughs> thanks to uh, this, uh, X at is the true signal. Or if you prefer the other cosine similarity, Okay, so it, I mean, here I, I, I connected all the dots together. Uh, I have the result for the MMSC, and you see that uh, under this assumption, you, uh, <coughs> you, you know what is the best estimator for uh, x So basically, the matrix A bar, which is lambda max of M, V, v transpose is asymptotically, okay, I don't know to write it, optimal for the mean square error I define. So even so, I'm not able to uh, compute explicitly uh, uh, the, the, the optimum for my uh, MAC. I know that uh, this one, will uh, be close enough in terms of uh, this measure of performance. Okay, so this is a, a case where it's too hard to, co to compute explicitly uh, the, the maximum, <coughs> the, the best solution, and it gives you a, a, a link between the estimate of the matrix, estimate of the, of the X vector. Uh, okay, I guess I have only one minute. So, uh, so next time we will prove uh, A and B. These two, the, the rest, uh, well, on, not well. We will have, uh, we will give an argument showing that uh, this might be uh, uh, true. Uh, by uh, considering a, a, an infinite ob uh, uh, object on which uh, we can do exact computation thanks to uh, a very nice uh, symmetric property in law of the, of the, of the replica. So we'll use uh, exchangeability basically in order to show uh, this result. And once we are done with that, uh, I will give you uh, the formula for the spike beginner. <laughs> which has been delayed quite a bit. Is there any question uh, on this? Yes. So uh, I'm writing it. Uh, we, 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 I think we were able to show uh, convergence uh, in L2, uh, but uh, yes, almost surely. <coughs> so, yeah, you will see in the proof where uh, there are some parts. Thank you.
So.